How good is the QX9650 in 2019? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. First off, the CPU has been overclocked. We are at 3.85 GHz, up from the 3 GHz base clock. Moving on to our RAM today, the RAM we are using is 8GB of DDR2 RAM. Moving on to our next part, the motherboard we're using is the P5K Pro. That is a socket 775 board from Asus. The GPU is an RX 580, and the games we'll be testing out today will include Deep Rock, Fortnite, Anthem, and moving on to our second, kid, uh, second set of games, Hitman 2, Battlefield 5, and No Man's Sky. So, let's get into the games, ladies and gentlemen. Starting off for our first game today, we have Deep Rock Galactic. How well does a game like Deep Rock Galactic perform on the Core 2 Quad? Well, Overall, as you can see, thanks to the 580, we were able to bump it up all the way to 1440p on Ultra, and the FPS was pretty good. I'm talking about smooth overall. I mean, look at that, 0.1% is below 60, but hey, the overall experience is going to be pretty good, and the footage, as you can see here, is pretty nice. We do have MSI Afterburner in the top left as well, in case you're wondering how it's doing, uh, how it's playing, moment to moment. And if you're wondering how this was benchmarked, well, the point that I used to benchmark was the, um, what's that game type called? Extraction points. These were matches of extraction points that I played fully on solo, and these are the results from those matches. So, overall, if you're going to be playing something like Deep Rock Galactic, it's going to work out pretty well. Now, let's get a little bit of info, some background on the CPU. First off, it's CPU all the way from the year 2007. That's right, we got a Core 2 Quad that is that old. In fact, well, most of them are actually that old. But anyways, still, it's a Quad Core from that year. This thing's over a decade old, and it's still playing something that just came out not too long ago. I don't know about you, but that's pretty impressive. And, I mean, Core 2 Quads are pretty nice, and you should overclock them. I didn't do that in the Q66 video, but all future Socket 775 CPUs will be overclocked. And... We got many more coming as well. I got a Core 2 Duo. I got a Pentium 4. Like, that's a lot. We got a lot of second Socket 775 stuff, so that's good. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to our next title today. And what could that title be? Well, it's going to be none other than Fortnite. So how well did Fortnite perform in a scenario where you have a 12-year-old quad core? Well, overall the performance was okay. Uh, the game is playable. It's not, however, very smooth. Um, it's also going to greatly depend on your location. Uh, as you can see, the FPS in the top left is a bit low. That's because this area did have a ton of people in it earlier, and that's going to make a big difference. Um, and in Fortnite, especially if you're playing, I mean, you can go from having a very smooth experience with the CPU to a ton of people dropping in and your FPS going down. Uh, the FPS is also much worse because I'm recording right now, which is going to make a difference. But overall, could you play something like Fortnite? Uh, yes, the answer is it's very playable. Is it the can be the greatest experience? You know, it's not going to be. But hey, what can you expect out of something that's so old? Uh, another thing is, a lot of people could probably overclock this thing much further. Uh, I had a huge, huge difference when it came to um, well, a huge issue when it came to voltage. When it, I got to about 3.8 gigahertz mark, the voltage requirements spiked up massively. But if you have a massive cooler or a water cooler and you're running the CPU, still to this day. I'm sure you get a pretty high overclock, maybe like something in the 4.4 GHz range, and at that point you could be doing much better. Anyways, yeah, Battle Royale, can it do it? Sort of. It sort of can. Not the greatest experience, but an experience nonetheless. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to our third game today, and that shall be... Anthem! How well did Anthem perform? Not very well. Uh, this is where the CPU kind of gets thrown to its limits. Uh, this performance was pretty bad. When I tested this scenario, it was in it was during a rain phase, which is not exactly well easy to run. There's a lot of stuff going on, and the FPS was pretty terrible. This is in the free play mode. This is just running a little course, and it's gonna be pretty bad. Uh, some other experiences I had though is it's okay when it came to some combat scenarios. The FPS was a little higher. But even inside the town, your little hub area, the game's pretty stuttery. Um, as you can see right here in the footage, it kind of stutters. It's kind of like a rubber banding effect that occurs, which it's sad, but it's not really playable. So let's go ahead and move on to our second set of games. Starting off with our fourth game today, we have Hitman 2. Another game that didn't perform exactly the best. It was, however, much more playable than Anthem. This is a game that you could actually run. Is it going to run very smooth? No. Is it even at 30? No. But is it a game that's capable? Is it a game that you could actually do something in? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. 
Uh, it's also impressive. You would expect something like this, a CPU this old, to not even do it at all, but you can play. Um, there might be some issues playing with certain games. I know Apex Legends won't even run. I tried testing that out. Nothing. There is an error. Uh, I think it's missing there. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. There's a missing instruction set that you need for Apex Legends, which not even Anthem or anything else uses, but apparently Apex Legends requires. So if you're looking at something like a Core 2 Duo or Core 2 Quad, it's probably not going to work out. Uh, I think it's the same thing with Phenoms. I think the first CPU that had that instruction set that's missing is uh, probably the first Gen i7, I think. Could be wrong on that. But overall, yeah, there are going to be limitations to not only be able to, where you're not going to be able to play the game, but actually not even start the game in the first place. And that's that thing with old hardware. Anyways, let's move on to our fifth game today, Battlefield 5. So, how will this game like Battlefield 5 perform? Um, well, not exactly the best. This, I tested out the last mission of the game, uh, the one where you're a German tanker, and overall the performance wasn't that great. Now, there are times where the performance was actually pretty manageable. I noticed when I played the intro, it was somewhere in the 40s, I believe, when I first started the game up. That's pretty good, but most of the time you're going to be in a pretty bad scenario like this where a lot of stuff's happening. I mean, it's Battlefield, it's pretty chaotic, and the FPS is going to absolutely tank down to... Uh, playability, but not smoothness in any sort of way. Um, it's kind of sad, and this is, has been, I mean, this has kind of been a thing with all Battlefield games. They're pretty CPU intensive. Um, I mean, God, I used to have a decent quad core ages ago on my laptop that couldn't even run BF3. That had problems, and I mean, hey, you know, I mean, they're just CPU intensive games. Anyways, moving on to the multiplayer, you're going to have a terrible, terrible time, and I would not recommend it. The way it was tested was a 64 player match on Grand Operations. The map itself was extremely foggy and the FPS was very, very low. Of course, the recording doesn't exactly do it justice. It's going to look a little worse than the recording, but I'll tell you this much. While playing, it's not much better. Um, <clears throat> overall, when you keep the 64 player multiplayer, especially in most Battlefield games, usually it doesn't play out that well with a weak CPU. But there are scenarios where the GPU, I mean not the GPU, the CPU could actually perform pretty well. This was during practice range, but then again, there's almost nothing happening in practice range. There was no AI or anything on the map, um, and it just performed a little bit better. So, moving on to No Man's Sky, that is our last game today. How well does a game like this perform? Well, also pretty bad. However, the game did feel, um, not exactly, I wouldn't say smooth, but it felt playable. You know, some games can have low FPS and just doesn't feel right. Well, No Man's Sky is a game where you can actually get away with the low FPS to a degree. It's still not going to be the greatest experience though, but if you're doing some casual stuff and you just want to build stuff or do some other things, not really engage in combat, it's going to be okay. If you're also doing some space flight in the game, it's going to be much smoother. You do spend a ton of time in space, but most of your experience will be on land, and it's not exactly going to be the best experience, sadly. But um, overall, I mean, hey, these are pretty demanding games I tested out, and it doesn't mean the CPU is exactly bad. I mean, there's plenty of older titles you can be able to run, no problem at all. There's other things you can do. There are DDR3 versions of the motherboard. You can also achieve a higher overclock. Um, I mean, even more RAM, faster DDR3 RAM, everything can help, you know. I mean, this isn't exactly the best scenario, and overall, it's still very surprising for a GPU that's basically 12. It's doing amazingly, and it's something that would probably surprise a lot of you. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to our last part, which is going to be the conclusion. So, in conclusion, in 2019, how effective is it? How good is it at playing these modern titles? Well, it's pretty decent, to be honest. The, some of the games are smooth, and some of them are playable, some of them are kind of unplayable, but overall, it's a surprise. It is very old, and given its age, it does incredibly well, um, thankfully, these CPUs also are amazing overclockers. They're pretty easy to overclock, and you can definitely gain a ton of performance. I mean, like I said earlier, DDR3 RAM, some few other things could definitely do... I mean, you could definitely get a good boost from all that stuff, and... I mean, overall, when it came to using the desktop, when it came to editing, stuff like that, I did also test that out. It wasn't that bad. Uh, I did feel like Windows was a little slow with 3 gigahertz. The 3.5 gigahertz was not noticeable. I mean, I was on Twitch, I was on YouTube, and there was no problem when it came to having multiple streams up or a YouTube video running in the background. Or if you're doing something in Microsoft Word, stuff like that, it's going to be a good PC for very casual things. Uh, video watching is not going to be a problem. And overall, it's going to be a pretty okay experience. And even if you're gaming, you're willing to go back to some older titles or titles that really don't stress your CPU. 
that's going to be much of an issue. So anyways, thanks for watching, and if you enjoy the content, you can leave a like. Yep. Or sub. Or you don't have to do anything at all. Here's all some more videos. Alright, peace out guys. Thanks for watching.